After a drone strike killed civilians in Afghanistan, including seven children, Tucker Carlson brought former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard on to denounce the Biden administration for the drone strike that was carried out. But Tulsi Gabbard had some other talking points in mind that countered her anti-war messaging when she ran for president. Let's watch. You get to lie about the loss of human life, you get caught and nothing happens to you? What kind of system is that? I mean, this kind of accountability is critical. I want to point out first that anytime there are civilian casualties in war, it is tragic and terrible. Yeah. War is a terrible thing and and I think it's important for the American people to understand that Islamist jihadists are continuing to wage war against us. And the Islamist ideology, not the same as the religion of Islam, but this Islamist ideology, which is a political ideology that inspired the terrorist attacks on our country on 9-11, is, is the greatest threat that we're facing right now in this country and the world. It is the foundation of governance of so-called Islamic countries like Turkey and Iran and Saudi Arabia and, and Pakistan. And it's what's behind the discriminatory policies that they have in these countries against Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists and others. So as long as these Islamist jihadists are waging war against us, We have to work to defeat them militarily and ideologically. And militarily, we have two choices in how we do that. Number one, we can continue to invade and occupy and nation build in countries around the world, just as we did in Afghanistan at great cost. Number two, we can take a targeted approach using airstrikes, using our special forces to go in and go after these terrorist cells. Yeah, you know, the anti-war person, says that we don't have to do any nation building, just do drone strikes and bomb them. Because that's the peaceful way to go about it. As long as you say it in hushed tones, sprinkled with yoga videos and aloha messaging. In fact, there's some aloha messaging from Tulsi Gabbard from just last week that I'd like to share with you where she says aloha. I haven't heard much, you haven't heard much from me lately as I've been gone for the last four months on an active duty tour and deployment to Africa as a civil affairs officer supporting a special forces mission to go after Al Qaeda affiliated jihadists. It was truly my honor to work. And by the way, I didn't miss that statement. She said that Islamic ideology is the greatest threat to the United States, not climate change, not economic inequality, that Islamic ideology is the greatest threat to the United States. That's amazing that she said that. Uh, Before we get to her bootlickers that are still pretending to be progressives and pretending (laughs) to be uh, anti-war, let's clarify a couple of things here. First of all, greatest threat, well, because we don't have universal health care in this country, 45,000 people a year die every year. Every year, 45,000 people die. And that is not a bigger threat, according to Tulsi Gabbard, than Islamic radicals. How many Islamic radical killings have there been recently in America? There's been a lot more terrorist attempts by right wing domestic terrorists that usually listen to Tucker Carlson's show. But now she's going back to old school to find Islamic radicals somewhere to blame for all of the world's problems. And then what's her solution? Well, of course we kill them. We bomb, bomb, bomb. I'm anti-war. By the way, remember she used to be for Medicare for all and then changed her mind in the middle of the primary because it was convenient. Apparently she thought politically, didn't really help her. But turns out she was lying about any progressive position she might have actually had. I'm sickened that I was ever, you know, an ally of hers in any way, and and so she apparently she never meant any of it. Look, any talk of Islamist ideology is nonsense. I can prove it's so easy for you. It's done by bigots like Tulsi Gabbard. It's not just that she's pro-war and pro-military and pro-strikes, etc. She's a flat-out bigot against Muslims, indisputable. I mean, so hold on. Yeah. Islamist ideology, she said it several times, right? What if I said, oh, okay, well, in Myanmar, it was the Buddhist government that drove Muslims in particular and did ethnic cleansing. Now, that's a fact. 
Now, if I said that's because of Buddhist ideology, everyone would rightfully think that you've lost your mind. What does a Buddhist in anywhere else in the world have anything to do with the Myanmar government and the power that they seek and the ethnic cleansing they did for that power? Blaming it on Buddhists is crazy. But when you put in Islamists, everybody's like, yeah, that's right, it's the Muslims. It's the goddamn Muslims. We hate the Muslims. That's what she's trying to do, because she hates Muslims. She's a terrible person. No. And you could replace any religion. Oh, Holocaust was because of Christian ideology. But wait a minute. Hitler said, I'm doing it for Jesus Christ. You can look up the quote. The, uh, the Buckle Bell said, Gott mit uns, God is with us. Now, do I think that you should blame Christian ideology for the Holocaust? No, it was people seeking power. There's a certain geopolitical uh, situation at hand. But when it comes to Muslims, everybody in America, including mainstream media, thinks it's okay to hate Muslims. So we just let them say obviously bigoted things, and nobody ever does anything about it. Well, we're gonna do something about it. Tulsi Gabbard, you are an obvious bigot. You hate Muslims, and it's and we're sick of it. And she's also always been in favor of militarism. She's always been in favor of drone strikes, as she made it abundantly clear in that interview. I mean, again, Tucker Carlson brought her on thinking that she was gonna condemn the Biden administration for the use of drone strikes in Afghanistan. The, the Kabul uh, drone strike that took out uh, civilians, but that's not what she wanted to say. She decided to talk about the importance of drone strikes. You know, drone strikes are so great because we don't have to have boots on the ground. We can just do these strikes and target whoever we want to target, even though there's clear evidence that the US military uses faulty intel to carry out these drone strikes. I mean, the situation in Kabul also made that clear. But look, her support of Narendra Modi and his brutality toward Muslims in India and Kashmir. More evidence for how she feels toward Muslims. Has no problem with that whatsoever. Tulsi Gabbard was always who she is today, okay? And back in 2019, when she was running in the Democratic primary, telling progressives all these cute little stories about how peaceful and anti-imperialist she is. All you needed to do was look at her record and what she had said on tape in many cases in regard to foreign policy, in regard to militarism that progressives, of course, are against. There was one person who called her out in 2019, got a lot of heat for it, and that was me. So this was from a show that I did for TYT back in the day called No Filter. Yeah, I'm taking another victory lap because I deserve it. People always underestimate me, always, and I'm sick of it. Here I am in 2019. Tulsi's self-proclaimed hawkishness also explains her support for drone use. To be clear, I am not supportive of drone strikes, and I've been highly critical of how the Obama administration carried out their use. I believe drones have exacerbated hostilities toward the United States by killing innocent civilians, which in turn helps terrorist organizations recruit and radicalize individuals. The intelligence used to carry out drone strikes has been unreliable and faulty to say the least, and I don't wish to support the same tired and counterproductive policies Obama and now Trump supported. Unfortunately, Tulsi Gabbard also seems to support the use of drones. The Intercept reports that when asked if she still favors a small footprint approach with limited use of weaponized drones against groups like ISIS and Al Qaeda, Gabbard said, quote, with these terror cells, for example, yes, I still believe that the right approach to take is these quick strike forces, surgical strikes in and out very quickly, no long term deployment, no long term occupation to get rid of the threat that exists and then get out and the very limited use of drones in those situations where our military is not able to get in without creating an unacceptable level of risk. Yeah, so questioning her anti-war credentials in 2019 led to a lot of backlash. But Cenk, go ahead, what do you think? No, I just wanted to say one thing about this. Look, Anna had all the facts and I remember when the guys still pretending to be left wing incels, whatever they are. Then attacked her viciously. They're like, how do you, how dare you with facts? Do you know that Tulsi Gabbard has been on my show? They said. And that's just the most important thing in the world. She helped my ego. Anna coming in here with goddamn facts. And they all attacked her. And I've never seen anybody come back and apologize. Or say, hey, you know what? Anna did have it first, and she was right again. For the 28th time in a row. Now, why do I press on that? Because look, when I get something right, I brag about it all the time. 
and everybody's okay with it, right? When a strong woman does it, all of a sudden, how dare you, right? Yeah, I don't give a crap. Like you, people can be as uncomfortable with it as they want. I just want people to understand that I don't just randomly say things without ensuring that I've done my research. And despite the fact that that segment was well researched, it came with receipts. It came from it came with direct quotes from Tulsi Gabbard. Came with video of Tulsi Gabbard essentially serving as an apologist for U.S. torture. You know, none of that mattered. None of that mattered. Okay. People who I respected at the time certainly have questions about today uh, had comments like this. This is Matt Taibbi, okay? Not to make light of this, it's a rule, so we're not drinking, so we're drinking. But why is Tulsi Gabbard the only unapologetically anti war Democrat? But is she? Is she? Did you take a look at her record? Did you take a look at what she had to say about the Senate's 2014 torture report? Because she was certainly an apologist for the torture that was carried out by the United States. But didn't matter. Then you have clowns like, of course, Jimmy Dore, super important to have a soldier on the Democratic debate stage opposing war from a position of strength. That's why I donated I donated to Tulsi Gabbard to make sure she gets on the debate stage and whatever, whatever other garbage she had to say about it. And you know, just constantly underestimated. Look, I'm not gonna go out of my way to attack people unless I've got the facts. And by the way, that segment, even though it did critique her past statements on drone strikes, torture, and what have you, wasn't a vicious segment. But she kicked me off an interview that I was supposed to do with her because she was afraid to answer my questions about her record. So while she pretends to be some sort of warrior who, who's gonna fight the jihadists, she's nothing more than a coward who skirts interviews with people who actually have the facts on their side and wanna ask her questions about what she really believes as she gallivants around town as a, as a so-called anti-imperialist, anti-war candidate, please. And, and, and that's why she goes on Jimmy's show, because he's the only one left that'll kiss her ass without asking any questions. And he won't read anything. Yeah, and he, he's like, oh, she's in favor of torture, doesn't matter, I didn't read it. She's in favor of drone strikes, doesn't matter, I didn't read it. I'm just a jack off comedian, whose ass do I need to kiss to get them on my show? Because I do access journalism, that's that's who Jimmy Dore is. And I say it in this particular case, look, you say Matt Taibbi back in 2019, maybe you didn't know, first of all, uh, that's okay, you can come back and say, hey, you know what? The people who did know, who actually did their research were right, my bad. I, I still have a little bit of faith in Matt and think maybe he will do that. We know Jimmy's Don't not gonna do it. We know the others aren't, the Glenn Greenwalds, et cetera, aren't gonna do it. They have no moral compass left. And it's interesting that we're willing to hold Trump accountable, nobody's surprised by that. We're all willing to hold Biden accountable very, very aggressively. I would say more aggressively than mainstream media and on issues that he deserves it on, more aggressive than conservative media. Why, because we believe in doing the right thing and principles and facts matter, right? But for some contingent, you can't Trump, you can't touch Trump. Oh No, no, if you ever criticize Trump, it's Trump derangement syndrome. Protect Trump, protect Trump, we're on the left. My ass, you're on the left, and now, uh, Tulsi, <gasps> no, 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 no critique of Tulsi. She goes on Jimmy's show. You can't critique someone who goes on Jimmy's show. Well, how will he ever get guests? He needs access. He needs access to the one politician left who's willing to go on his stupid show. No critique of Tulsi. She's my friend. That's not how you do journalism, jag off. <laughs> and then I'm gonna say one last thing. Tulsi is in a radical cult. In this case, it's not in in uh, Trump's cult, um, although she's inching in that direction as well. But you no, know, she's in a radical Hindu cult. It's literal, you could read about it. You, we told you about it earlier. Uh, everybody tiptoes around it because it's religion. <gasps> oh, don't say it because it's Hindu and then the white people get offended. And it's some, rad, it's some weirdo white dude in Hawaii who made up a bunch of crap. And apparently she was too weak minded to realize she's in a goddamn cult, okay? Yep. And so, but she, we're not allowed to critique her cult. But she's allowed to go smear 1.6 billion Muslims on television over and over again and say Muslims are the biggest problem in the world and the greatest threat to America. Let's go kill more of them. No, no deal. You're in a weirdo radical cult. Go get some help and some therapy and stop hating on other people and starting wars and causing death and destruction. And if you agree with Tulsi Gabbard on those issues, you could be call yourself anything you like, but you're not a progressive. Go grift somewhere else.
Thanks for watching the Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.